Hi folks, my name is Joe Patterson. I want to thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Welcome my friends, welcome. I'm on my way to work. I got a bunch of repairs to do today. Precious, precious things. I thank the Lord that I have provision um, each day. Let's talk real quick about the gospel. I had a conversation with an older gentleman the other day and uh, many times it's not quite as gentlemanly like as maybe you'd like it to be. People get really stuck on what they believe to be the gospel. So I'm not going to argue with you either. Uh, and I don't mean that mainly, of course. Uh, well, how I mean it is I'm not trying to produce an argument. I'm trying to present to you the gospel that I myself have received. Now, Paul had a gospel that he received from the Lord. James had a gospel he received. Peter, a gospel he received. All of those gospels were the same. All of them lined up. All of them were in agreement. Okay, this one, I believe, is as well. Because I received Paul's gospel, I received Peter's gospel, and James's gospel, and, and John, and, and Luke, and, and, and Matthew, and I received these things. So, let's see if you do. The old gentleman was visiting with me, and he made the comment, Do you know the gospel, he says to me. Tell me what it is. Now, many times when people talk this way to you, they already have what they believe is a revelation of exactly what it is. And they assume that you could never speak what they know. But they want to see you try, because when you try, and in their eyes you fail, they are going to unleash a fury of what they call understanding on you. And it will lack love. My experience every time. Okay, I used to do it. I've lacked love plenty of times in my life, and, and I'm, I'm not going to claim like I've been perfect. I know I haven't. So now I submit to the Lord and cry out to mature in love. I want to mature in love. I want love to be always at the helm. The gospel. The man tells me that if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is is Lord and you confess with your mouth that he is Christ the son of the living God that he died on a cross for my sins and rose to life and now sits at the right hand of God that is the gospel now I would be foolish to say gosh that ain't the gospel because the gospel means the truth the truth about Christ the truth about God, the truth about what pleases God, the truth about the way to live, the way to life, and the way to death. That's all the gospel. All of it's the gospel. Paul talks, I think, in Ephesians, where he talks about, pray that I speak boldly as I should, and that I reveal the mystery of the gospel. So the mystery of the gospel how is it that Christ can save us? How is it that we are purified by his blood? How is it that grace is afforded to us? How is it that we take part in a divine nature, right? How is it? How is it? Understand it, right? So that understanding has to come from God above. Even if Paul tells you, the apostle says to you, here it is, unless the Lord gives you ears to hear, you will not own it. It won't, you can't get it. So you have to cry out to God, number one, for ears to hear. That's part of the gospel. Okay, so the gospel that I've received is simple. I could say it extremely simple. What Jesus taught, Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord? Why do you confess with your mouth that I'm Lord and, and, and believe in your heart that I'm Christ and all of that, and yet you don't do what I say? He says you're a hypocrite if you say that, if you do it. So your confession is worthless unless it produces in you obedience to God. We have to obey his commands or we won't be saved. That's the gospel that I believe. It's a simple thing. You can ask someone, do you believe that you must obey God to be saved? And many, I've had people tell me, I do not believe that. Okay, so if you don't believe that, then you have a different gospel than the one that I received. So on this channel, at this moment, I'm just, all I'm doing is sharing you with the gospel that I believe is the one that leads to salvation, that leads to eternal life.
It is the gospel I believe that Jesus taught. Jesus said that he's the vine, right? We're the branches. We've been grafted in. Those of us who, who confess with our mouth that Christ is Lord, who believe in our heart that he is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and now sits at the right hand, those, right, we're grafted in. Now, he says to those people that are grafted in that you must produce a fruit. Therefore, you must receive discipleship. You must be discipled. You are going to be led along. You have, God has leaders. You may be for a time and maybe always under leadership like we all, I myself long to be. I love, I love leadership. I love gathering with men of like faith and submitting to them and submitting understandings to them and, and cases that are, need judged uh, think wrongdoing. I love being submitted to that. Um, I'm thankful for it. If that's the gospel, that's all part of the gospel. If you don't understand that you have to produce a fruit, Jesus says, or you will be cut off. It doesn't matter what you confess and believe in your heart. If it doesn't produce in you a fruit that God calls fruit, that's a pleasing aroma, read it. It's in the book of John. Jesus teaches that he's the vine and we're the branch. If you don't produce that fruit, you'll be cut off and thrown into the fire. That's... Jesus, that's him teaching. He also taught, blessed is those who hear the words of mine and put them into practice. He likened them to a man who builds his house on a rock. When the storms of life come and all the troubles and worries of this life, you'll be saved, he says. But the man, he said, who hears what I teach and doesn't put it into practice, he will perish. His house will fall. That's what God said. So these are gospel teachings. Paul taught these things. Peter taught them. James taught them. John taught them. Matthew taught them. Luke taught them. Please, this is the gospel. So <clears throat> there are lots of gospel. It, it, it's bigger than just a, a quick sentence. It, and so the churches have taken and made this sentence. They've come up with a sentence. Here it is, right? If you believe, if confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that in, in that scripture, you can find it. You can quote it. There it is. They'll say, Joe, that's, that's what it says, the gospel. So what I'm trying to tell you is there's understanding to be had or you will perish. You will die in ignorance. You can't just go around saying that you believe and live like a sinner. You still live in the same old way you did. You still long for the same and lust after the same things. You're still in idolatry. You're still greedy. You're still sexually immoral. You're still adulterous and fornicating. You're still uh, gossiping and backbiting and sowing discord among brethren. And you're still your heart's still anger and lots of offenses and unforgiveness. And yet you think the blood's going to cover you? We're called by Christ to repent. The Lord says his callings are irrevocable. That means they're irrevocable. His, his uh, calling is irrevocable, people will quote to me. Joe, it's irrevocable. But let me tell you what is revocable. Is you not accepting the call. You're not receiving it. How do we receive it? Jesus said wisdom is proved right by her actions. So Christ in the book of Titus teaches by the Holy Ghost that by your actions you deny him. Then it tells what those actions that deny him are. Folks, all of this is the gospel. So stop believing what's fantastical. That you say, I believe and I'll be saved. And ever the church is, oh yeah, see you're saved. You're, and because you're saved, now you're going to want to obey. And then if you don't obey, what do they say? Well, I guess you were never saved. But you said they were saved. This is what I, my point is many times to these churches. You're the one that said they were saved. Then when they don't behave like they're saved, you say they're not saved. It's confusing. There's a race to run. This gentleman that was talking to me said, there ain't no race to run. If you believe there's no race to run, you and I don't share the same gospel. The, Paul taught there was a race to run that we had to run the race to the end. That is where you will gain the prize. What is the prize? The crown of life. Jesus taught all the way through, folks, but we'll just quote what he says in Revelations over and over, and not just Revelations, it's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can read it. I'll show it to you, okay? He says, he that endures to the end, he that overcomes to the end, this is the one I will give the crown of everlasting life. 
Jesus said, always pray and never give up. If you're saved at confession, there's nothing to give up, right? There's nothing to give up. So there's a reason we are called to be faithful to the end. Faithful to what? Faithful to obey the teachings of Christ. None of us walk perfectly without stumbling. None of us walk. Many times we fall. We need help getting up again. Falling means we fall in back into sin. Okay, all of us have done it. I've done it. I'm not telling you that you won't or can't. I'm not saying it. What I'm saying is obeying God is following through. What does he say to do when you sin? He said, confess your sin the one to another if you've sinned against a brother, if you haven't, if you just sinned against the Lord, then confess your sin to the Father. Forsake it and he will forgive you. But you don't use this mercy as a license to sin. You don't use grace as a license to sin, right? So we know we don't do that because God won't honor it. So we speak from a pure heart. Forgive me, Lord. I have erred, right? I've done it plenty of times. So no people that say, well, Joe, you're, you're acting like that we got to be perfect. We, no one can, we're all still sinners, which I'm going to make a video on that in a second. But the understanding is this. The simplicity of the gospel is this, that Jesus come down here to show us the way to please the Father. He gave us, Father gave us grace by sending his son down here to teach us the way. His own son, not born of men, but of a woman and, and the seed of the Father from heaven. Jesus come from heaven and took on flesh to teach us the way. And he came to fulfill the law. And he did it. And then he taught us how to take part of that divine nature and be Christ-like. We can walk as he did. We can do the things he did and greater things than the things he did we can do. Because we have to learn to live by faith, not by sight. Okay, we don't, we don't walk with Jesus in person like a flesh that we can shake his hand and hug him and all those things. We don't have that. So we live by faith, faith only. And so our faith must produce in us an obedience to our Father and to, and to the Lord Jesus and obey the commands that were given us love each other as I have loved you Jesus said so love one another this is how they'll know that you're of me he said anyone who claims to love me must obey my commands if you don't obey my commands he said you're a liar so this is the true gospel this is what I believe so it agrees with Paul it agrees with James it agrees it isn't this little sideshow gospel that says say the magic words and you'll be saved because so many people say the magic words and they go back to living it for the world. And they think they're going to be covered by the blood in the end because Jesus come to save sinners and he did by calling them to repentance. Anyway, till next time, Brother Joe, on the true gospel that I've received. If you can't receive it, okay, but I receive it as salvation. So I'm not going to let you remove it from me. You can't possibly take it away from me because God has given it to me. So I'm not going to let it go. I'm not, you can say I'm preaching works and all those things if you would like to. That's, that's up to you. Jesus was accused of being demon possessed and out of his mind. He was accused of being a friend of tax collectors. He was accused of being a drunkard. Okay. Was he any of those things? He was also accused of breaking the Sabbath constantly. He was accused of many things. Wanting to be king over, uh, what, uh, the, the, uh, whatever his name is, Pilate, Pontius, whatever, wanted to be the king over Caesar and, and saying he's going to king and I'm going to take your king. And he didn't say any of that. He is the king. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. So that they spoke rightly. But he didn't come down saying, I'm going to take all your people and we've got armies here. I'm gonna do. That's not what he did. He come to call his people out to reconcile the children of God to the Father. And he done it gloriously. So for those who follow him, they will be reconciled. But following Christ, he's not going to lead you into adultery. He's not going to lead you into fornication. He's not going to lead you into greed. He's not going to lead you into malice and hatred and, and, and unforgiveness and, and jealousy and envy. And He's not going to lead you into lust and sexual immorality and, and, and gluttony and whatever other crimes there are against the Lord. He's not going to lead you there. He's going to lead you into holiness, godliness, goodness, self-control and self-discipline and love and faith and hope and joy. And that's where he's going to lead you. That's the gospel. So if you're not experiencing the fruit of the Spirit coming out of you, maybe you've received a false gospel. Till next time, Brother Joe, on The Gospel.